Well, and what, folks, you don't realize, right now, you're talking to King Command Hook. That's right. This guy... I'm king of the Command Hooks. This guy's, like, favorite thing to do is to go look at Command Hooks at every store we go to. No. with like the tiny house movement but if you didn't know it Mike and I are the parents of nine kids so I never saw that in the realm of possibility for us until recently um, about six months ago we decided that we wanted to tour the country in an RV with our nine kids and because of the benefits we felt like we could make it work to travel see these things learn about the history enjoy the beauty of our country and so we had to really quickly learn strategies to have a bunch of people in a tiny, tiny space. So today I'm going to share with you some of those strategies and hopefully help you. I can't tell you specifically how to use your space, but I can give you some of like the overarching principles that we've used and that we'll use in whatever space that you're tackling, whether it be a tiny house, an RV, or just utilizing the space of your regular size home better. The first principle that is really really important is you just have to get rid of a lot of stuff and when I say a lot I mean like a lot more than you think you should get rid of more than you think you should get rid of it is not easy to do and it is actually a time-consuming process okay so prime example of something that never should have been purchased <laughs> that we have we never use I don't think even once why did you buy that what, what is it? I don't know what you that is. You put your curlers in your hair and then you put this on your hair dryer and it will dry your hair with your curlers on. I mean, I it could like be a I, cool costume. I look like that thing from Star Wars. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, boy, I got that bought up. And you'll find a lot of emotions come up because you are emotionally tied to your stuff. But it's also awesome. When you're getting rid of that stuff, each time you get rid of it, you all you feel a weight lifted, right? It's actually a literal weight because you're getting rid of stuff. But you feel freed and you feel happy that, um, and you also feel kind of like, why did I have all of this stuff in the first place? So that's obvious. We use the KonMari method. That's K-O-N-M-A-R-I. That is an awesome method for getting you in the mindset. But you know, there's all sorts of strategies and different techniques out there for getting rid of your stuff. But coupled with that is the second strategy. And that is... Get rid of more stuff. <laughs> yeah, really, get rid of more stuff. <laughs> but the third strategy then is stop buying stuff. Because you got yourself in this mess in the first place because we, you're just, you know, you go to Target. It's like Target, man. I love Target. And I love to go to Target and like, ooh, the dollar spot. Ooh, that's a cute little thing I could put on my wall or I could give that to my kids. Or, oh, that t-shirt's only $6. I, I could use an extra t-shirt. And so, and Walmart's just as bad, right? So we're pulling all of this stuff out. And I see all these things I bought like two years ago, six months ago, one month ago, and it seemed cool and it wasn't expensive. And I thought, if I buy this, then I'll be a better homeschooler, I'll be a better mom, or my kids will be smarter. You know, calendar activities and workbooks. And I'm hoping, if nothing else, that this process teaches me not to buy so much stuff. And so we just get in this cycle where we're constantly bringing new stuff into our house. Um, you have to stop that. And um, that's hard, right? You have to stop bringing in stuff. And that is really, really important because no matter all the stuff in the world that you get rid of, if you just immediately start accumulating stuff again, you're just going to find yourself in the same place again. Now, that was a lot easier for us because we literally do not have the space for that stuff. So I can't tell you how to do it besides maybe moving into a tiny house. And in fact, we are a tiny, tiny, tiny house because according to the tiny house movement, <laughs> you get 100 square feet per person, which is for us an 1,100 square foot place, which wouldn't be so bad. But in here, this RV, we have 375 feet. We think. Square feet. Square feet. We haven't actually measured it. We haven't measured but it. So we, I think we think that's, that's what about it what it is. I think okay. it's smaller actually. So next, the third method, and probably what most of you are looking for, is um, organizing your space. I think there's a few facets to that. Um, and the first one I will say is actually maybe something you haven't thought of, and that's color palette. Color palette. Yeah. If, if you, we have, I believe, and I've seen this in my homes, 
and especially now in the RV, you have to have a tight color palette. Um, visually, if there's a lot of stuff going on, including colors, um, it's just going to clutter up your space. And hmm. so for us in our RV, I chose really green and a little bit of blue, and then you can have your neutrals of like black and white and cream. And that opened up our space a lot, and it feels a lot cleaner and a lot more organized. So I love color, and uh, maybe you could bring it in in some pillows, but really be careful with the things that you put on your walls, the um, things that you decorate with, and try to have a really, really tight palette. I didn't know that. Oh. Did you tell them that before? I don't know. Oh, okay. Probably. And the final, or the next step of organizing your stuff is um, going vertical. Um, once we finished our RV, we redid it, we changed the colors, we made it beautiful with that tight color palette, we then had to start utilizing our space, which was a little bit hard because um, it doesn't mean it, you're going to lose some of the beauty of your space. Now you could do it really, really well and we're trying to work harder and harder so that it's still visually pleasing while using the space effectively. But most part we started looking at every wall and every vertical space as an opportunity to store things. These are our dish drying racks and we take them down after every meal and put them back up. Sometimes they'll stay out between meals, but um, we have... credit for those? Yes. Mike. My idea. I thought of that. Well, and what, folks, you don't realize, right now, you're talking to King Command Hook. That's right. This guy... I'm king of the Command Hooks. This guy is like, favorite thing to do is to go look at Command Hooks at every store we go to. No. Listen, <laughs> go to Walmart or Home Depot, and they have this big Command Hook, like, station, and there's these... What a Command Hook is, it's a hook that you can actually... You probably all know, but a hook that you can stick to the wall, like, with it has a sticky thing and then if you need to take it down the sticky part will just come off and doesn't leave a mark the hook will just come down but easily. they can be fairly strong but they can still the the most the heaviest duty hook will hold five pounds um but they're awesome because they have different hooks for different things and you can hang all sorts of stuff on the wall or um you know on other walls mike why don't you take us around walls. to show us some of your command hook okay, strategies yeah. so that's that was, that might be my favorite up there. <laughs> um, this command hook, just hanging these things so they're not on the floor. In here, in the bedrooms, what one thing we did is we took the, uh, these are shoe pouches from Ikea. They actually come in one long thing. And I cut Over them. Over the door, yeah. So that you can hang them like a door which we have one hung on the bathroom door in there. But I cut them and then I had these uh, grommets grommets added to them. If you go to just any anywhere that will print banners and things like that, um, they can add grommets to just about anything. And so I add these grommets. How much was it, like 50 cents a piece? It was like less than that, I think. Yeah. It was really cheap. And then I, and so then I, I took them and we hung them by the command hooks so that each kid who has one of these beds has somewhere to put just their miscellaneous stuff, which kids always have, you know, stuff that they, whatever. That one is actually the top portion of it already had grommets in it. So, as you guys can see here, this organizational journey is a work in progress. Yeah, we're still working on it. It's not perfect yet. You know, we still have, during the day, blankets and pillows to store. Well, that, that's what's hard is out there in the main living area, those all, everything becomes a bed out there, and we don't have storage for all the bedding. Which is if just, you're not in an RV, that's not going to be a problem. Which is for not you. a big deal, but in our play, in our situation, we just have to kind of put the bedding up back here on these beds during the day. So I see some more command hooks so here. So these are all hooks. Every kid now, some of this stuff has been taken down, I think, to make it a little less cluttered looking. <laughs> maybe. But each kid back here has a hook as well. Yeah, there's a bag right there. So they can do that. I did. I put a heavy duty command hook up here for the guitar. And um, I see a towel station. Towels were also done. Now somebody suggested we, we we sew a little ribbons in these so they'll hang better, which we probably sh and show them what else you did for the do. towels so that we can keep uh, those. Well, and also I had everyone's name put on the, their own towel because that was a constant issue before in our, even our normal house that everybody people would drop their towel on the floor <clears throat> and I never knew who to blame. <laughs> but now I do. But <clears throat> what I've realized is that kids they'll just they'll claim somebody else threw it on the floor and they didn't. But 
All right, let's go look at some more command hook strategies. Okay, command hook. Or just, there's also things that are not hooks. Well, okay, so something like this, for instance, this is from Ikea. These are little shelving, I don't know what these are meant for, but I got some and I thought, hey, what are these, what can we use these for? And I needed somewhere to put our iPads and our Kindles. And so it's become they, like a little charging station right here. Yeah, I, I, I put this here. They just sit here when they when they need to be put away. The, the point of all this organization is that there's somewhere to, everything has its place. That doesn't mean everything is always in its place, but at least when we're picking up, it has somewhere to go. Because in a house, you can kind of fake it because there's tables and there's counters and there's different places you can just put something. Nightstands. Nightstands. Junk drawers. Junk we don't have drawers. a junk drawer here. Yeah. So we couldn't really fake it anymore. So I knew I needed to have a space for these because that was always an issue. And the same thing for laptops, which you can't really see it, but back here I put um, another one a of those. Similar type of situation with those. It's back there, and the laptop just fits right in it. We also got some of these from IKEA. Now, obviously, IKEA was like our best friend, but you can get these at lots of different stores. We just felt like that was yeah really awesome. So these are these little these little bars, which they're I think like, are actually they're are they not going to have? Any I don't know, but they were like three dollars. They're way cheap, and they have lots of different things that can hang on them. So we put headphones, headphones hats, there, kind of miscellaneous. reading lights. Kids have lots of miscellaneous. We also stuff. used one down here to keep some utensils in that were too big for any of the drawers. Oh, and we used one here for all of our craft supplies. Mm -hmm. And then there's one in the bath, ba the back bathroom back there that has the same Tooth. thing, four cups, and we have toothbrushes and toothpaste and that sort of thing in them. So awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want more command hook? Um, now these, you know, we had these little things from Ikea. They were book, um, they were for like books, right? That's what we were using them for at home. Or were, no, they were spice racks. And That's so, cool. yeah, we just, they were so cheap. I think once again, they're just a few dollars. We thought, this is storage and we're just going to buy them. And then we figured that we could put our essential oils in. We're big essential oil people. We teach classes on essential oils. So mm -hmm. that has been awesome. I hung those. They're pretty straight. They're all level. Don't worry. Awesome. Okay, another thing we I've seen a couple times in Mike is these over the door hangers. We have yeah, them on both use, sides of the we doors. We use the doors for all they're worth. So I'm really actually worried that the doors are gonna be like pulled out <laughs> by the screws. But we have this on this side of this door for coats and whatnot, and then on the inside of the bathroom we hung. This. So this is that full deal. So this is what I was talking about. It's not all beautiful. But this is awesome. I have my makeup in here. I have like flat irons, brushes, toothbrushes, this thing. my hair thing. I, and it's so easy to access, lotion, ear things. It's not beautiful. Maybe there's cool shoe hangers and maybe this is just too ugly for you, but who the heck has seen the inside of our bathroom door, so. What we did find though is I, I tried to use command hooks on this one, on the door, and it's just too heavy. So we had we did the over the door thing. For okay. It. Way better. Inside the cabinets, we just did probably stuff that everybody's thought of, basic like Nothing real containers. Real. Now we could definitely do better at vertical space in our cabinets, uh, and maybe someday we will. But for now, that works. Yeah, it works. We have bins on top of cabinets, but we also looked at every space in our. Um, our, our tiny space. So not just vertical spaces, but we thought of underneath spaces, right? Um, underneath every bed, underneath every sofa, we saw an opportunity. <laughs> Into the master bedroom. Um, in here. Which is about the size of a king size bed. It's got about. <laughs> it's got a queen bed in it. 18 inches on each side. If that. Oh, if that. Um, one thing, command hook wise, we did, Megan has all of her jewelry. We put all the jewelry up. I put everything up. Some of my jewelry's on there too. Yeah. <laughs> and for what I couldn't fit there, Mike got some more of those little containers that? from Ikea that Check come off. Out. And they I come off and you can put them back on. Get my little, my studs out of there. Hey, you put your phone in my little thing. Oh yeah, well. And also, well, with an RV, you also have to consider, w will things move while you're driving? So I like these because there's not just a cup that's sitting here that'll slide around while you're yeah. driving. It won't do this. That doesn't even really work in a stationary house. It always just it becomes clutter. Over. So something, Command Hook Company makes things that aren't hooks too, right? They make Velcro things too. Um, right here. What are you pointing at? Oh, this. <laughs> so we also did this for our um, remotes. remotes. So Velcro. It's, it's kind of like Velcro, but it's a lot stronger. Right it doesn't work. It only works for things that are, are hanging. 
it doesn't hold for things that are, are being pulled on this way. So if there's forces placed, because I try to use this for the little Shelvings. shoe things, oh. the kids, <clears throat> but because a lot of the force is pulling out, it doesn't work. So this, these work best when the weight is being pulled down on it instead of out. That might be a little too much information. Yeah, for I don't somebody. know. <laughs> um, Here's our closet. We have things stored in and out. Yeah, the closet, that's pretty straightforward. We could do better. And then that. we have storage under our bed, right? Yeah. And I don't think they need to see that. It's just, it's kind of fun. All though. right. All right. I don't know. I don't know how clean it is though. Under there. Under the foot of our bed, our bed oh. overhangs that storage a little yeah. bit. And then there's obviously this box. If I were not living in an RV, I would absolutely do this again. The underneath of a bed collects mostly just dust bunnies oh. in a stationary house as well. Yeah. So um, in any house that I'm going to live in from now on, that's going in there for yeah, Christmas ornaments and things you don't want to go to the attic for, right. but still want to use. You got some more command hooks over there. You, our closet is full of command hooks and hooks. Yeah, uh, another thing that we did for this small space is we got a different vacuum. So this vacuum is the Dyson, I can't remember which one this is, but this works so much better in a RV to vacuum we don't have to vacuum as much because that's as much right there as will fit in the vacuum. So it's not very big a space. But this way I can, it's lightweight, I can put it in here. Keep it vertical. And you know, it's off and on its own. So we recommend that to anybody in a tiny space. We actually tried to use our regular vacuum in here and it was kind of ridiculous. It was huge. Um, All right, King Command Hook. Thanks for spending some time with us today. No problem, kids. You're the best. I know. Okay, so also under the beds. Under the couches. Couches, which they're out their beds too. Yeah. These be, this becomes a bed, that becomes a bed, and we, we, we added legs, which are kind of... Ghetto. Ghetto. No offense to anyone who lives in the ghetto. <laughs> but... Um, We're there right with you. This bed pulls out. It's really clean. You know, we can't see that. Don't okay, worry about good. it. Um, the bed pulls out. It's a twin bed. It goes all the way up to here. And then we just, when we're done for the night, we just fly to bed under. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and then we use the same space under here for drawers for the clothes. Each kid has a drawer. So this is the other thing about not having a lot of stuff. Our kids, our younger kids, have one bin only for all of their clothes. These and, are all of Eve's clothes. And guess what? It hasn't been bad. Now, we don't keep their winter coats in there. Those are under our bed. Right. And their Sunday clothes, their church clothes, they are, hung are hanging up. That's right. But they've been, and there's no shoes in there, obviously, but it's been just fine having yeah. their clothes in that. And if it's not, then we need to get rid of more clothes. Because kids wear, like, the same three things anyways. Yeah. At least our kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our kids don't have a lot of options. All right, so. Oh, also laundry. If you're trying to if you're trying to cut space on laundry, now this is this is a little unique to us because it is very small. We just have this that hangs here for laundry, basically for all the kids, and then we have a similar one in our room that hangs on the laundry closet. Um, because we had these laundry baskets when we first came in here, I'm like, this isn't going to work. You know, they they can't be on the floor. There's no. Floor we had space. to get them vertical. So we had to hang them. So this hangs on the door. It fills up in a day. I, we probably do two or three loads of laundry a day. This guy All does. The, I didn't want to say me because I don't want to make you look bad. <laughs> does so. that make me look bad? <laughs> um, I do the laundry, but yeah, it, it's two or three loads. Uh, and they're smaller loads because our washer and dryer is a little bit smaller. Because we're But small he does space. a great job. But the great thing is, it's just in a closet in there, the washer dryer. No one sees it. It's just... Always going. If you're talking about really cutting down on space, that's, that's handy. All right. Anything else here? Well, we've used that up there above those. Yeah, I talked about those. These are the ones that are not the right color and I will be recovering them. They work okay, but it would be so much cleaner if they were just bright white. I could only find cream colored and I want them to be matching the cabinets below them. So they are going to be recovered, you know, when I have extra time. Yeah, whenever that happens. What about so, kitchen stuff? Should we address any kitchen Well, stuff? so something that's awesome in an RV, and I think actually would be a good idea for a stationary house, is that they have these, these, these things that slide into your sink so you can utilize the space 
in your countertop. See that? We have a sink, a good size sink there, we both have sides. A sink, people. Well, people were wondering when they saw photos. Um, it's real. Sure. You could get something similar made in your kitchen so that you have you can utilize more of the counter space in your kitchen. Uh, we, we never use that oven, and we sometimes use it for storage. Well, yeah, it can be if yeah, an oven can be used for storage, and so can a microwave, especially while you're driving. But again, if you're not in a moving house, that's not a big deal. And people ask us a lot how we keep enough food. Really, I think half of our fridge was filled with random condiments yeah. that you used once for a recipe and never again. Well, yeah, because when we cleaned it out, you realize we use very little of this stuff. So the fridge, we do have a little fridge outside. Do you want to open up the fridge for him? Is it clean? I don't know. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sad, huh? It's kind of clean. So we're working on the fridge organization. <laughs> Nothing's upright. Uh, Some hummus. Hummus lid. Now something about the Not fridge, perfect. I've seen a lot of people try to shove tons of stuff in there, but your fridge stops working very effectively when you do. You have to leave a little bit of airspace for things to circulate. International airspace is better. So now Mike's doing some strange puzzle to try to close the fridge again. So, if you're wondering how we do it, we barely, barely do it. <laughs> <laughs> so the food is difficult. We put, We actually put a lot of food up in those bins up there mm -hmm. um, and this is our this is our pantry so it's not real big and it's not looking real great right now what's shoved up there cereal mm. life cereal get a life um all right awesome yeah i think that's most of it nothing nothing that can't be done you know it wasn't like uh, it, this isn't rocket science i think it's just actually thinking about it because before, when you have a bigger house, you don't have to think about some of this stuff. You can just sort of put things wherever, but using the walls is a big deal. So I know it can be done. If we can do it as a family of 11, live in a tiny space, keep it organized, then I know that you can do it. Um, and it's really refreshing. It's really easy to keep it clean when you live in a tiny space. And I can't say after the 18 months that we're gonna live in a tiny, tiny house, but I definitely know that we've learned a lot of principles and we'll have a lot less stuff. <laughs>